uh, okay. Um, so, all right. So this uh, tutorial session is about um, that extraction, cleaning, and transformation or uh, transforming and formatting data. Uh, basically, it's an ADA uh, tutorial, but just as um, before starting that, I'm going to give just a very simple um, uh, steps to uh, export to the data. So the data you have is in this uh, telecom database, um, telecom.sql file. And you have to export that into a Postgres database. And uh, yeah, so this, the, uh, some of you probably have tried to already, or maybe succeeded. Um, we will go through this uh, in in details later in the in the in the next uh, tutorial in the afternoon. But just uh, as like to give you guys something. Um, so what you need is. Um, Postgres uh, SQ, uh, SQL, and uh, uh, this is to just to create the database itself and uh, to read the data into like Python. Of course, you need uh, like uh, these uh, modules, pandas, if you want to read it into a, a data frame. And so, um, so this is the commands you will use on the terminal. This is uh, like on. Um, you have to basically the first two three three steps this you are creating just a database that is empty i'm calling it telecom but it can be anything it's up to you and uh, then because i'm working on the same terminal i'm i'm just exiting from the from the uh, postgres api and uh, using this um command to restore or to create the database from you, uh, dash user, uh, you is the user, so I'm using Postgres, the host, local host, and um, this is a database name and the, the path to the file. So depending on where you put it in your computer, you can just put it there. Once you do this, you're supposed to have like the database created. And um, then of course you can connect to it in, uh, sorry, so should have like made it clearer. This is like a Python code where you can like read the data into a data frame. So these uh, three slides are, are available on the, um, uh, the, the folder you have for week one. So in the technical under presentations, so you should just find it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the presentation. So let's extract that. Down. Um, any questions about this? Quickly. Um, or do you understand it? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, that's exactly what I did yesterday, but I get a uh, kind of value error uh, get value at error. line number 93. Yeah. OK. Uh, did you did you share uh, uh, like? Depends on what or what you did. Um, OK, uh, I cannot really, unless you show uh, I, me. I, like, I can uh, show you the. OK. Yeah, sure. Let me, let me just open it. No, no, leave it to in Slack. I will, I will, I will, um, uh, sorry, okay, I will, okay. uh, yeah, I will, um, do that later because we have, we have oh, another okay. thing we have to go through, but yeah, yeah. okay, sorry, okay. okay, yeah, yeah, uh, Abraham, go ahead. So I'm just asking if you have, a, yeah, the slide is not shared on uh, the document. Really? Okay. I, I will make sure that it is it is shared. Okay. Okay. Um fine. Um okay. Uh so I will move on. Um I will let, leave the questions for later. Uh, and of course there is a tutorial the afternoon that will be all about this um the Postgres and SQL and um, how to export the data. Sorry. 
was sharing. Oh, okay. Um, can, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay. So you have, you can see this in the Jupyter, uh, sorry, Google Collab uh, notebook. Uh, all right. No, so, we, we can't. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I think we are seeing Aaron's uh, yeah, screen. Someone, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, screen visible. Let's see. Is he presenting? All right. Sorry. Um, fine. Now you see it? Yeah, 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 okay, yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so this is just uh, you already had like uh, the people who went through week zero already had this. Uh, you did ADA already. Um, I'm just going to just uh, recap what ADA is. It's just like this is the first step in data analysis. Whether you're going to just want to get some um, insight from the data or you want to do like a machine learning as you yes like is a case for our uh, in our talent here so but ada is a first step like uh, summarizing visualizing understanding the main characteristic of the data set we have so it's not uh, like i have a code here like exploratory exploratory data analysis is not an attitude is, is an attitude of flexibility and a reliance on display not a bundle of techniques and and should be so taught so is, the idea is that it depends everything depends on the data it's not a fixed set of steps you have to do you don't have to do like a like a set of pl plots or you have to do a set of uh, particular like in a in, in a particular uh, order all thing everything depends on the data so you look at your data you start by questioning it you start by visualizing it transforming it and depending on what you get you can go ahead go again and transform the data again and um, and generate uh, insights and questions the point is that you have to generate questions on, about your data so um so this is just like a, an introduction uh okay so i'm importing here the modules I knew, i'm using which i'm using pandas and uh, numpy and um okay cporn and matplotlib is these are for uh, plotting for, for visualization and uh okay i'm using some um like examples uh data so it's not the data you have for of our challenge this is just um an example so the first step will be here I'm calling it data screening but like it's just like the first look at the data so i'm reading the data here so it's a uh, diabetic data csv i'm reading into a data file the um, a data frame sorry and the first thing i did i just looked at the head so i'm just looking at the first uh, five records and uh like the first view of like what kind of data I have, the columns. Uh, so this data is um, uh, sorry. Um, okay, the, the data is just patient data from um, a, a diabetic for diabetic patients, and I have things like. Uh, uh, the age, the gender, the race of the patient. I have like an ID, ID encounter, ID, ID number for the patient, the admission type. Like, um, okay, so I can see this like in, in the head, but of course I don't see everything here uh, because they have many columns. I'm not seeing everything. Anyway, I'm going to do like pandas have very, um uh, have very useful uh utilities and functions so one of them is this info so i'm applying it to the data frame and it will give me like all the columns the columns and the data type and the number of non non, uh, non, non counts so the number of non-empty values in the column so i can see all the columns here with their types 
I have numeric data types and I have object data types, which are like, can be text. Um, and I can see that like, um, uh, it also tells me like how many, like how, how many entries are there, how many records are in the, in the, um, in the data set. I have like 10,000, uh, 100,000, 100,000 records and 50 columns. Uh, in my data, so plenty. In in your case, in the challenge you have you have like like fifty five columns, and um, I don't remember one hundred fifty. If I remember correctly, one hundred fifty thousand records or something like that. Okay, uh, so we notice like we have this non null values. So we have null values, like some that some values are are empty or missing in in my in my data. And I can look at those more, like, uh, so this is NA, so this is null, basically, and I'm summing it. So it will give me like the number of null values for each column. So pandas already like um, recognizes null and NAN as null, but here also when I read the value, when I read the, sorry, the, the um, file, I defined an A value also as like as uh, a question mark and none. These are also null values because like um, this is like a, if I looked at the data, I recognize that these are empty. Uh, I was told also beforehand that these are like empty values, so I defined it in when I read it. So pandas recognize these are empty, and I can see like some columns have like they are completely full they have zero null values and some have really like a lot of null values in them so a lot of the patients they I don't have the weight for the patients and that means like when I do the analysis when I'm going to do like machine learning in the end or whatever I'm going to want to get insight from this data this column is not going to be very useful for me because it's almost empty um right so these are something I have to deal with at, uh, at some point. Um, okay, another thing I can do is that because I have a lot of numeric values, I can look at the statistics, like, um, like the descriptive analysis of it. So com compute the mean, the mode, the median, and the variance. Um, and again, sorry, someone has a question? Yes? Rodolf, go ahead. Okay, I would like to ask you, first of all, yeah. good morning, everyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I would like morning. to ask you for the missing value. Yes. If you notice that uh, a given feature has a lot of missing value as you have shown earlier, do yeah. you delete, do you remove that feature from our data or how do we proceed on that? Okay, this is definitely one of the options. One of the options is I can delete, like I can drop this column completely because I don't have enough information in it. And, but there are other options I can deal with, with missing value depending on, and uh, there is not really a, like a hard rule to do that. You have to use your judgment here. So for example, you can decide like if you have a column that is missing like uh, more than 40% of its value, if it's, uh, it's track of the values in, in it, I can drop that column. Okay, you can decide that, you write that, write that down when you do that. I, I decided to do this and use like, write your motivation for doing that. Uh, yes, someone asking about the slides. Uh, sorry, when you, um, sorry, um, let me finish this. I, I'm going to go through like how, like the different ways to deal with um, with missing values next so you just uh, uh pay attention to that um and then if you don't get something ask again okay so i'm just like uh i'm like i'm showing you this uh, again pandas function called describe which will just you apply it to the data frame as a whole and it will give you like a, a statistical um, we co compute all of these uh, functions to compute the mean, the standard deviation, the, mini the minimum, the maximum, and the 25, 50th, and 75th percentiles. 
um, for for the numerical data. So I have like, okay, these are not <laughs> patient uh, ID. These are not like I don't need any information. Is that kind of information for this? But um, I have like time since the hospital, for example. So these are non non empty values. So I have like the mean is four. The average number of the patients were in the hospital were four times 4.4. Okay, so it has to be four. A standard deviation is two. You know what the standard deviation is? The dispersion of the of the distribution for the whole data sample or data set. The new minimum is one, of course, because I have the patients that came to the hospital at least once, and the maximum is 14. Uh, and then uh, 25th, 20 fifth and fiftieth and seventy five that means like at least twenty five had like uh, two or less visits to the hospital. Half of the patient had uh, like four or less visits to the hospital, and like uh, three quarters of them had six or less um, visits to the hospital. I'm sorry if I'm going too slow. Uh, maybe I'm explaining too many things, but I'm just uh, trying to. Uh, show maybe someone uh, not very familiar with these um, 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 terms. So yeah, uh, tell me if I'm going too slow or too fast. Uh, just to to we have a lot of stuff to cover. So um, anyway, so I have this like very useful function. Can, of course, you can use it also on just one column here, and let's say. Um, so time in the hospital that I was talking about right now. It's taking so long now. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, handling the missing data. This is what we were talking about before. Uh, so here I'm defining a function. This just will give me like the percent of missing uh, uh, values in in a data frame or a column um so this is just a useful function i can use it like i'm, I'm also talking about modular python so these are functions i can define i can put in a different script and use them in my eda uh notebook or whatever wherever i want to use it um okay and uh so you can see like in Applying it to the whole data frame, we see like we have like 7% of, of the records or the values in general are missing. Um, but uh, then I can also apply it to one column and I see that, for example, we saw here that we had, which one this one was, like some of them had like so many missing values, like for example, So the weight, the weight, and um, so yeah, percent of the weight that is missing, ninety-six percent of the weight is missing. So I can, like, um, am I still on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. As I said before, yeah, it, it will make sense, like, just yes, it's a judgment from us, like, makes sense that we can drop the weight because we we don't have the weight, basically, only 4%, or less than 4% of the of the patients, we have the weight for them. So it's not really useful for our analysis. Um, uh, okay. Uh, all right. So what other options we have to deal with, with missing values? And there is a deletion. We can delete, for example, the column that is missing most of this value. But also, like if we have records, like for patients, if you have like in, in our data frame, we have patients that we didn't collect. The, like there were like uh, for some reason that some the, a lot of their data is missing or some of their data is missing. Um, then I can drop these if especially if they are a, a few, like the records are few, if they are few. The, the rows i don't want to lose uh, the my rows so i will if there are a few i will like i can drop this um 
usually this is like uh, how we do this. Well, the reason why we, when we decide it's suitable to do that. Another option we have is to fill the missing values. Uh, for example, we can look, we look at the column and then calculate the mean or the median or the mode for that column. And then each of the missing values, we fill them with, with those, with whatever we can choose, what, like one of them. Uh, it's a simple method, it's suitable when the data has, doesn't have uh, outliers. Outliers are like the data which are like values that are too big or they're extreme, too big or too small. And um, this, of course, uh, like they mess up, mess up our mean or the median for our data. So <clears throat> this is the assumption that the mean or the median are representative. So I can, in some cases, I can fill the missing values with these. There is a forward or backward fill. Also, when we can order our data, like suppose in time, say like we have records. For example, we ha I have data on the um, the price of a, of a, of a share, uh, like every day, and then I have like missing data for some some days. I can like fill it forward or backward, meaning that. Uh, I can like decide that the missing value for like one day is the same as the one before the day before. This is like fill forward or backward is I fill it with the day after the value for the day after. Um, so it's used. It's like could be suitable in some cases. And we have also inter uh, interpolations. Uh, this is when I like uh, for example. I fill the missing data by like it's an ordered set, and then I fill it with uh, with the the average between the one before and the one after, something like that. Uh, there are different interpolation methods. Um, uh, pandas like uh, ha pandas has like uh, uh, functions to do all of these things, and um, and interpolation methods that are defined there also. Uh, there are other more advanced methods for filling missing data that use machine learning basically. So it's uh, like this is beyond what we what we want to do here. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Let's see if we have enough time for this. So sometimes um, it makes more sense to use uh, if I have an object data type column okay this is the case when i want to deal with the mean median or mode if i had an object data type text text for example as this i of course i don't have median or mean but i have a mode the mode is the, like the most common value right so i can fill the missing data the missing value with uh, the most common value in my column in that case for the number of data types uh, i can use uh, like any of the three Sometimes, depending on the distribution of the data, uh, uh, it makes a sense to, to use them, or sometimes it doesn't make sense. So in the case of the um, normal distribution, you know, the Bell distribution, the median and the mean are the same. And uh, we can use them basically to fill the data. It makes sense. But when our data is skewed, basically like the data can be negatively skewed when like um, uh, it has a tail to the left or it can be skewed if it has a longer tail to the right and in this case the median and the mean are different and uh, um, the, the mean is not representative in for for my data in that case and like i can decide that it's um it's not it's not uh, it doesn't make sense to use it as a as a as a fill in value. So in our case, uh, like I'm just using an example, like you already see the plot, but okay. The number of medication, and you can see like this is a positively skewed, right? So positively, it looks like this one it has a tail to the right. Yes? Is a question? Guess not. All right. Um, 
of course, pandas has a function that can, can calculate the skewness for us. And um, it's like you can have, see, like it can be positive or negative, and um, the value itself can, can vary. So it can be very positive or like very close to zero. So uh, basically not skewed. Uh, question? Yes, Abdurrahman? Uh, sorry, I lost the connection for a minute. Can you repeat the part about the skew? That's yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying uh, because I, we're talking about filling the missing value with the mean or the median. And uh, I, I'm saying that filling the value with the mean, with the average, is uh, makes sense when the data is equally distributed, like to the left and the right. But when it is skewed, it doesn't make sense anymore or makes less sense because it's less representative for what we have. And um, you can go through this uh, if you want. Uh, in, in the end, it's a, it's a, it's a value judgment, it's a judgment in the end of what you think. Like you can calculate the skew and it's not, it's not too high. You can use the mean if you want. It's like, it's not, it's not, um, it's, a, it's just a rule of thumb you can follow. Um, okay, I'm pretty it's nicer with C bone, so you can see like this is this is a built in plot in in pandas, and this is a C bone, so you see that like, it's not much, um, much nicer here. Um, okay, so uh, talking about feeling, um, uh, sorry. Uh, filling uh, um, missing values, I can use this fill now um, panda panda function pandas function, and uh, I can use it like a, I either use like a scalar value here can be the mean the other or the median or whatever, and um, I can also use the method like uh, forward fill or back fill. And of course, we mentioned that we can drop uh, uh, missing, like the record that has values. We can use drop and a there. Um, so, in our case, we saw that like um, we have columns that. Sorry, I'm going back just to work. I don't have to go back. I can do this here. So, I see like the data frame we have is now and then i sum it up to just to get so i have columns that are missing a lot of values so i'm going to drop these so i'm going to drop them weight the pair code, code medical medical is speciality, speciality. Um, uh, so these these columns that are missing a lot of their values here. So I decided to drop these from my call, from my data frame. So I'm not using them. And so I dropped. Uh, I will drop five. So I will end up with five columns. Uh, so, so less than five columns of instead of fifty for forty five. And uh, I can fill. Then like I still have I still have like missing values right. So like in this clean one, I still have missing values in some of my columns. Right, uh, the race uh, is the diagnosis one, two, and three. So diagnosis one, two, and three are like uh, the target, basically. I need those, I'm not gonna drop them. And um, I didn't explain like why what I what I want to out of this data, but I'm just I'm just telling you this. Um, so these are important. I'm not dropping them, and they are not missing a lot of value. A lot. Of, this is missing well significant number of values, but not not all of them, and not less than thirty percent. So of course the race is a text is an object that that type. And these are numerical data types, so the filling uh, NA will be different for each. Um, here I'm defining just like useful functions to fill uh, forward fill and back fill for a column, basically. And I'm going to 
forward field uh, diagnosis. The diagnosis were numerical. No, sorry. And they are objects, so they are not numerical values. Sorry. So they are. Let's see. Um, so yeah you can actually look at the values here instead of just walking um blindly kind of so i have it's called thing with this one and um So I want to see, so this is n unique, the number of unique um, values that are in this column. And I can look at some of them. I will just get a lot. There are codes, basically, for diagnosis. There are numbers, but like there are strings, <laughs> strings of numbers. Um, anyway, since there are codes, I think there are codes for diagnosis, and so it doesn't make sense that we have average or mean as a mean or median for them. Um, it's it's uh, we can treat it as an ob as an object. Oh, I'm not missing something um, here. Anyway, I forward filled it. All of these uh, three um columns and for the race i filled it with um with the mode so i'm using fill now and here i'm using like the mode for the for the race here um okay so basically this is ends uh, like uh, dealing with uh, missing values um the next step will be visualization does anyone have a question about missing values for now yeah Yes, Rodolf. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask a question regarding the squeeness. Yeah. So how do we uh, address that when we realize that our distribution is not normal? Well, your distribution is usually not normal, but you can cal cal calculate the skewness. And if you find that it's uh, like I calculated it here, some point yeah so as long as the, the skewness is not so high um you're fine basically you can use the mean to fill it but you you have to think if you want to fill with the mean or not if you want to also fill with the average or not depends on the case um like use your judgment and then uh, whatever like you come the, whatever you decide to do write it down and um and you can go through the analysis and you can come back and decide that this was not the right thing to do um so yeah it's, there is not a hard rule for to do all of this stuff it's just like yeah it's a rule of thumb this is uh, like usually what it, what is done but it's not there's not a hard rule is that clear yeah it's clear but there is a, any thresholds to consider no it's a threshold it depends also you have to you have to judge yourself like what makes sense to to lose like um uh, uh, you can decide i decided like uh, i'm losing all the columns that are missing 30 percent of their values um but you can decide that you you want to like uh 20 percent is is enough uh, like uh, you want to lose all this too or like even less than that or even more it depends is this is your decision by the way um is this, there is not a hard rule to do that um okay <clears throat> okay all right all right so i'm going to move the next uh the next uh, section is visualization and i we have uh, as you see in your challenge also you have like visualizations that are um so yeah so first uh, like visualization are useful because 
you will learn a lot by just looking at the distribution of, of for your data. And it can be easy to like see mistakes and outliers. Again, the outliers are the values that are extreme. And then you can also, by using uh, plotting multiple variables or multiple columns in the, the same plot, so you can see the relationship between them. Two or more, you can see the relationship between multiple variables. So again, here I have utility functions. These are just plot plotting functions. I'm defining them sorry right here this is a missing value again but uh, yeah so, so these are like plot plot plotting how um, this finding how to plot different types of plots um here you can uh, you have this you will have this notebook so you can look through them you can uh like uh, copy or using as a as a um as an example to, to, to build your own functions. Anyway, uh, so we have two kinds of um, plots. We can have, uh, sorry, not this, univariate analysis, which is like a plotting one variable, basically. And here, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the distributions of different um, variables. So, don't need to run this again, but um, number of lab lab procedures in my data. I'm plotting here the histogram of it, and you can see the distribution. Like, um, so the plot is too big, but anyway, you can see that most of the data is like this is uh, basically the mean here. The median anyway it's um, around 40 here and see there is uh, of course it's uh, starts from zero so of course here you can if there are a mistake there is a negative value or something you will see it here um uh, it starts from one or more and then you have like a very long tail here so that means probably i have some extreme value here um outliers but yeah the histogram doesn't show me the outliers so much to, to show me like the distribution um again this is the distribution of a different variables number of medications again you can see like here um, um most of uh, like this is like um the area with the most uh uh yeah so this is um it's a histogram, but also the draws as a PDF of the distribution. Okay. Um, okay, this is a description of it. So the mean, that's, uh, the mean is around here. So yeah, around 16. The standard deviation is eight, which is like uh, here. So from 16 to 24 to eight here so this is the mean the standard deviation and uh, the minimum is one the maximum is 81 and you can see like these are like um, again the percentiles the 25th and 50th 25th percentiles so like uh, three quarters of the patients have number of medication less than 20 so up to 20 this is three quarters and um this is the meaning of this because now you can see it actually uh so in the outliers uh, another kind of plot is very useful for outliers it's called the box plot um which basically draws for you um the okay the time of the hospital again but again it draws us also the distribution it's basically showing us the 25th percentile, the 27th, uh, 75th percentile, sorry. And uh, most of the of the of our data is around here. So this is uh, fifth and 20, 95th, I think, percentiles. And then I have data points here. These are outside the, uh, these are outliers outside here. So most of the data is around here. And these are outliers. So you can see that I, in this column, I have outliers. 
for time in the hospitals. And um, wh what we do with outliers, it depends. Sometimes outliers are fine. We don't touch them. Sometimes it will make sense to drop the outliers. So I will look, I will say, go back to my, um, my data frame. And then I define a rule, like for example, that if any value that is uh, more than that 95th percentile, I'm dropping all of that. So I can decide to drop these values uh, or not, depending on, on, on our case. Here are more examples of this. The procedures also have outliers, more, more outliers here. And um, yeah, number of medications, all of these have outliers. So you can see, because we saw like there was a, like a long tail before the number of medication. So there are outliers here making this. So most of everything is less than here is most of patients are here. Sorry, you cannot see the plot. Sorry, most of the patients are here, from like around twenty and less. But then you have outliers and above here, like up to eighty-one, which is a big difference, right? So if I, for some reason, I decide that it's, I don't want to look at these patients that have like eighty-one uh, the medications, I can drop this and just keep the patients that are more like. No. Um, okay, so these are outliers. Um, uh, okay. So yeah, I'm plotting more variables. Um, okay, so the, okay, yeah. So I can I define the function that fix the outlier for me. It's fix outliers. I have to go back to to see like how it defined it. Sorry, I, I'm sorry guys if I'm I'm confusing you a little bit by going up and down. I hope it's not too confusing. But hey, here I defined a function called fix outlier. Someone I want to ask a question. Okay. That, that was a mistake, I assume. Anyway, I I defined that fix or not layer. Basically, I'm dropping any value that is bigger than the ninety fifth percentile. Basically, that like I, as I, as I said, and. Um, I'm dropping this out, and then uh, once I run this, you can see that. Um, so here I did this here, and now once I run like number of medication, you see that the outliers disappeared. I don't have them anymore. They were here and they disappear. Of course, once you remove the outliers, the distribution changes a little bit depending on how much, how many values you dropped. Um, but basically, yeah, that's why it's uh, like that's 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 the goal, in a sense, or it's a, a symptom of of doing that. Distribution of um, fixed medication again. There was a long tail to the right. Now there is none, and you see like the distribution looks more um, flatter. So. Um, more concentrated, actually. Um, okay, I can also see that here. The before the number of medications, the maximum was eighty-one, and now it's thirty-one instead. Um, okay. I can do this. This all of these values before were were um, numerical, but I can do the same for for. Um, I can plot also the counts for like near for the categorical columns or features. So the race I have like uh, Caucasian, African American, Asian. So this like that is American from America. And um, okay, um, 
yeah, so it also tells me something about the distribution. I have see like Caucasian is the most common value there. Um, I have distribution of gender for if in my patient. Um, of course, I have male and female, but I also have like some missing value here that I didn't like. I didn't catch before and non invalid. Okay, so I can go back and remove this if if um, if I want. It it seems like there are very few. Okay. Um. So this is the the use of doing this visualization. You can catch this stuff. You can cut outliers. You can catch the missing values again or mistakes or um. Uh, okay. Also here. So I'm going to move on to uh, yeah. So these are more and more plots after removing the, the outliers. Okay. Um, okay. I want to move to the multivariate the multivariate analysis. So here. Uh, there are has, like um, options I have for plotting um, okay I'm here Sorry. Uh, for example I can plot the number of lab procedures and number of medications in a scatter plot well maybe I'm just trying to guess maybe these are related number of medication number of lab procedures that the patient had um, and then see like if there is a relationship between these two um, is there some kind of a linear relationship they increase together here I also did uh, vary the values by race uh, okay so the style here I choose the style to be race and the hue to be race so that I like differentiated the values depending on on the race so I can see this like they have different relationships between so they, I'm plotting basically three variables here um, um I can also here I'm plotting the number of lab procedures and time in the hospital so the relationship here is um looks um definitely not linear uh okay i just can gain like insight about this or like ask questions like what will happen if i, I plot by age for example um i'm looking at this and thinking about that you can also plot um yeah, this is box bar, uh, box uh, plot but it's like I'm plotting the number of medication, but varying it by race. So see, like the distribution, like different by race. So sorry, I can see. I want to see it here. So Hispanic, Asian, other. Like you see, like the distribution is slightly the mean is different for different races and the distribution is wider for some races uh, than others um so yeah these are insights you can you can gain from just plotting this stuff uh here i'm plotting number of medication and um uh, and gender but remember that the uh, unknown invalid this one was small in distribution so in the number of of, uh, of records that had this so this is not really shouldn't be useful really yeah um anyway so yeah this is what what happens with like with um, um multivariate uh, there are other options you can draw you can plot a heat map you can uh, plot uh, a pair a pair plot um yeah so are there are other options for doing this okay uh i don't know there are like a, a, 
also that's a transformation. It's, this is uh, about, I'm just going to go quickly about this. It's a standardization or normalization, and also we have dimensionality reduction. This means that um, when it comes, this is like a, about, um, think about numerical features. And uh, when you run, why do we need this? Why do, what are these and what, why do we need them? Standardization is uh, uh, transforming the, the, your data in such a way that the, um, the distribution becomes, they have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Normalization means that you are transforming your data such that the value becomes uh, co um, confined between zero and one. So you are normalizing the, the your your data. So depend like for example, number of medication uh, was in our data was between zero and eighty one, and then we changed when we dropped the outliers, it become from zero to thirty one. But then we can normalize it so that the value only varies between zero and one basically by dividing by 81 or something like that. Uh, so, but we don't have to do this by hand. We have modules to do this uh, in uh, keep, uh, <clears throat> sorry, um, just to, I will show you here a very, so why, why we do this? We do this because in machine, when we, Enter our data in in a machine learning algorithm. As algorithm uh, will take all these features, it doesn't look at what what are they. It just look at the numbers and then apply numerical operations on that. So if uh, I have one feature that it takes like a, a range that is very big, say I have um, like in the thousand, and then another feature that only varies between zero and ten. In these operations, the, the, the feature that has a very big range will have a very big weight. And then it will, like, the result that the algorithm will get me is that it will give me, like, this feature is very important because it has a big value. But this is just artificial. It's not, it's not real. Uh, so when I do a standardization or normalization, I am removing this um, issue. So that, like, uh, basically, my uh, M, uh, machine learning algorithm will look basically equally at at these features, and then uh, give me an insight into the actual uh, effects on on whatever the um, target I am I'm looking at. Anyway, this is in in in, in short. Um, here I have uh, like uh, some uh, data frame that is filled with uh, just uh, random values, twenty at 2,000 of them, and I can plot it, the original one. So the minimum and maximum uh, I have between uh, 0 and 2,000. Um, this is uh, like, of course, it will change over time because I'm using not random numbers. But anyway, this is a distribution okay, between 0 and 2,000, but it's like have a very small very long tail to the right. And uh, I'm using from Esclearn. I don't know how the, the name of this module really. Anyway, the full thing. This is a machine learning uh, module. And it has uh, the standard scalar, basically. And applying it, you can see that like the, my original data has this distribution from zero to two thousand, and here it was normalized to be um, uh, scaled. Sorry, to be between so it's less than zero, and so the mean is at zero, and the standard deviation is one. So it was standardized. It, this is like basically. That uh, normalization is the, is to confine it between zero and one or minus one and one. Um, these are my options. Uh, again, there is a min max scalar. Here I'm giving it. Um, um, okay. The mean value and the max value is zero zero and one. So you can see that like. Um, Sorry. 
All right. Uh, I'm just trying to go this. Um, so I'm plotting the normalized data and the values are limited between uh, minus one and one, basically. Here. Uh, okay. Uh, let's um, stop here. And uh, any questions? Um, we don't have much time, but uh, okay. Let's take some questions. Abdurrahman. Uh, yeah. I didn't get uh, the diagnosis part. Uh, what you show us a string of numbers well, what this should mean yeah i think I would, uh, okay uh, honestly i didn't go through like the description of this data it's, it's not um uh but i think it's like um i think it's a it's a it's a code for diagnosis but i'm not sure that's why it was like um it's basically a categorical data it's not numerical um i uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I have to go like uh, back to like the description of the data to 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 answer this question. Honestly, I don't I don't remember. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have another question. Uh, question about uh, something you said. Uh, negative values. Uh, what is negative values? Well, uh, yeah, okay. Um, negative value, depending on the feature you have or the column you have, you can, if it's a numerical, you can have negative uh, values. I, I was just, um, is, this, is this about the mistake? When I mentioned there could, could be a mistake when there is negative values? I don't understand your questions really. No, no, I mean, uh, what is the negative variables? I, it is it our, our layers or what is it exactly? No, I think at some point I said for I can find a mistake in the value when I plot it by seeing, for example, yeah, let's take this, this uh, number of lab procedures. So a patient can have a number of lab procedures that they went through and this can, I mean, logically, it can be between zero and whatever. It cannot be negative, right? And if I plot, I can check that, of course, um, by looking at the description and because um, when I use, uh, sorry. So let's see here. So let me do this. So this is my um, data frame and number of lab procedures. Okay, and I use describe. This is the, the function that calculates the mean and the standard deviation. It's also gives me the minimum and the maximum. So I can see the minimum is one. It cannot be less than that. Because if there is a mistake, I will see it here. If there is a value that was entered wrong, it has negative value. It will, it will appear here. Of course, I can also apply just mean here. I just want to do that. In this one. And again, also I said, if you plot it, also if there was a negative value, it will appear here. The, uh, this outliers is the extreme. So a um, negative value is a mistake in this case because it doesn't make sense. But uh, at a value of like uh, 120, it makes sense. It's not a mis it doesn't need to be a mistake, but it's an extreme case. This is a patient that is very different than the norm. Most uh, patients have like around 60, 40 because they frequent the, uh, the hospital. But some patients, some maybe some one patient came so many times to the hospital, they had so many procedures and it's like too far out of like the, the rest. As I said, again, the best uh, plot to, to see outliers is not, this is the distribution. This is show me the distribution, how it looks. Because the distribution can be like all around one here, but here we see like it's around here, around 40, the concentration, it looks a bit like a normal distribution with a big tail to the right. 
but uh, the one that shows me the the outliers is actually sorry it's a procedure so we really good um i don't i didn't plot it but okay a box a box uh, uh, plot is like this one show me the outlier here so these are records that are outside of the fifth and 95th percentile is that is that clear to you no yeah it's clear thank you okay any other questions okay uh rodolf and after alexander yeah go yeah. ahead sorry uh i lost my connection for a couple of minutes yeah anyway my mm -hmm. question, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you have already answered my question, but as I was not there, I will ask. Mm -hmm. I would like to know how to handle the outlier, if you will remove them, or if you will um, uh, review them as uh, maybe uh, replace them with uh, the mean or uh, the mode, I don't know. How do we handle the outlier? Thank you. you. Okay, you can drop the outliers, basically. You don't change the value. But this, unless you think the value is wrong, but this is if you believe the value is right, your data, um, you don't have a reason to believe the data is wrong, you can drop them. So you remove them from your, your sample. If it doesn't make sense to drop the, the outliers, you don't want to lose them, you think they are important, you can keep them. It depends on, on the case, in the, on the case you are looking at. But yeah, you can either drop them or leave them, um, basically. And you can okay. choose the criteria to drop them. So you can choose like, I'm going to remove anything that is more extreme than the, 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 the sorry, 95th percentile. Anything that is higher than 95th percentile, I can remove that. Maybe you want to remove the extremes from, from below also, if there are. Um, or maybe you don't have uh, like a, such, a, or maybe you want to, to remove even more, like 90th percentile instead of 95th, depends. Like it's a judgment in the end, like how you do this. And um, you have to, to, meet, to motivate it and explain your reasoning and see how it affects maybe your results in the end. I don't know if we, Speak too carefully, actually. Look at how it affects the result. It is uh, something complicated, but you can gain like at least some feeling of how it affects it. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, Alexander, is this clear, Rodolf? Sorry. Ah, okay. Yes, it is. Thank right. you, Alexander. Okay. Uh, thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Uh, when we visualize the uh, attributes to treat the outliers, there may be an outlier. Uh, yeah. But after, mm -hmm. but after treating the outliers, the data loses significant values. Uh, take an example. Uh, when the data has uh, two attributes, uh, attribute values, take an example, yes or no. When mm -hmm. yes is... Uh, with a small number of it treats yeah. about uh, as outliers. And when it treats the outliers, the data contains only one values. Oh, okay. So in this case, what you're talking about, outliers are something that you have in, a, in, a, in numerical values or something that you can measure, you can order, right? You can measure the distance between them. I can know of number of medication, I can measure the distance between one and 80. But what you're talking about is a categorical feature. Uh, yes or no, yes or no, there is no, like you cannot measure the distance between these two things. What you're talking about is a class, basically. Maybe, yes, uh, most of your um, patients or whatever, like you have answered yes for something, and then a few of them are a minority that answered no. Okay, um, it, it depends on the case you are looking at. For example, maybe you are looking at something and it makes sense for you to drop the minority. You don't, because it's not, not a target for you, it's not a feature that is important, and you want to look at something uniform, and this uh, 
three, like a few people that you don't care about, you can drop this. It's not an outlier, you're just choosing to drop, uh, um, like, uh, you're basically dropping the whole, um, the variable. So you'd not look at the variable. But in some cases, say, think, of, for example, uh, say that I want to design, uh, <laughs> This is a very simple case, but like okay, I'm just giving it an example. Suppose you want to um, make a model that predict, um, say, spam emails or um, fake uh, or uh, fraud transactions in in a for a bank or something. In these cases, the class or the labeled data for your case, like the labeled data that you have emails that are to the target actually so you don't touch the target i'm, say, I'm, say, I'm saying something very simple uh maybe it doesn't make really sense to use it here but anyway suppose i have the column this is the target so the target i will not drop things from the target the target for me is a column that tells me this is a spam or a real email and if you look at this column you will find that the spam is a minority like maybe 90 percent of the column is all real and uh, less than 10 percent is spam or in the case of fraud uh, transactions it will be even more drastic than that but because this is something you are looking you want to detect basically the fake or you want to detect the fraud you have to keep these in your data okay this is like a very simple example it's uh, kind of drastic but um, i don't know if you get what i what i said Okay, th th thank you, thank you. I yeah. understand. But I have a second question. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, uh, the second question is missing value treatment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I have a analogy of uh, missing value treatment before, and I have seen from your presentation numeric values are treated with uh, mm -hmm. mean, and uh, any categorical values are treated with uh, mode, am I true? Yes. So yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Okay. But, but uh, when sometimes when, when uh, after this process, uh, I test my model uh, model performance and see that the model performance is uh, low uh, as I expected. But mm -hmm. I change my uh, missing value treatment. Take an example: some feature, some numeric features are treated by mode and uh, continue, and the model performance is uh, changed, meaning that it changes from eight five to. Uh, Eight seven. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can we say that some numeric value, numeric value missing, was um, treated with mode, or the way I go is uh, false? Oh, okay. You see, you say what? Um, I want to give you a, an answer that I'm sure about. So <laughs> let me get. Or if someone knows the answer to this, please. But I don't. I don't want to say something that is not correct. Um, so let me get back to you on Slack. All right. Okay. If unless um, um, also tell me if you have like an idea of how this should work. Um, anyway, I will get back to you. Okay. This. Uh, we went on a, a much longer than the yeah like more than 10 minutes more so if you have any more questions please ask on slack you can tag me imtinan uh, tutor and uh, or anyone else um on the thing about the database we will do that in the next tutorial okay so thank you guys for listening and sorry for taking so much time okay bye yeah Thank you. Please, can we have the notebook? Yes, yes, I will make sure that you have it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye.